going on everybody? Welcome to Lingo Reacts. Coop on the quarantine dial and S here as always. And we have another pitch meeting, ladies and gentlemen. This is Star Trek. Star Trek, not above, not before, but beyond. Star Trek Beyond. This is the third one in the franchise. I believe it came out uh, three or four or five years ago, somewhere along that time. I don't really remember. But Chris Pine is the main movie guy in this, of the all of, of all the Chris's that we know in the uh, universe of acting. Chris Pine is the one that's playing in this one. I remember Chris Pine from the Wonder Woman pitch meeting that we reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just an awful movie. <laughs> I, I watched it afterwards. and yeah. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah. That didn't dissuade you? Uh, it dissuaded me, but then afterwards, I'm like, you know what? I got to really see if it's as bad as people are saying. Uh, and dude, it's hard to get through. I, I remember like... Yeah, I agree. It's just as bad as people are saying. Like, And this is not to, to hate on Wonder Woman. I actually think the first one was like maybe one of the best DC movies we've seen out there, but the second one was, yikes. Um, this is Star Trek Beyond. Listen, Coop, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm more of a Star mm -hmm. Wars guy than a Star Trek. I'm more of a Battlestar Galactica guy than a Star Trek. Uh, which, mm -hmm. which, which way do you fall under when it comes to all of these sci-fi movies? Um, I've only seen these Star Trek movies, and I don't know anything else about Star Trek other than these. Mm -hmm. Um, Star Wars, I like, and I've seen a lot more of their stuff and their shows and everything and all their movies. Right. Um, but if I was going to compare the recent Star Wars movies to these Star Trek ones, I like the Star Trek ones better. Okay. Okay. I remember the first yeah. two were pretty good. I, l I liked Yeah, they were pretty good. I liked Star Trek Beyond. I think I got shitted on. Mm hmm But I remember I liked it. This yeah. one was really different. It's very vibrant and colorful. A am I right? This is the one that has Zoe Saldana in it, right? No. Uh... Actually, I don't know. To be honest, uh, yeah, 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 I believe it does actually. Anyways, anyways, as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification button if you guys don't mind. Let's jump into it. Star Trek Beyond pitch meeting. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. So you have a Star Trek sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's going to be called Star Trek Beyond. Oh, what's the meaning of that title? Unclear. So we're going to start the movie with <laughs> Captain Kirk giving a piece of an ancient weapon to some aliens as a peace offering. Okay, but then they get mad about it and attack him, but it turns out they're tiny, so it's very fun. Uh, things being surprisingly small is tight. If that's what you want to tell yourself, sure. Yeah. So Kirk gets back on the ship and puts that thing in storage, and then they head to this giant new Federation star base. So what's going on with them? What's he been up to? Well, he's been captain for about three years now, and he's not really finding it exciting anymore. He says it feels episodic. Uh, yeah. So he decides <laughs> to apply for a desk job. Oh, yeah, that'll solve that excitement problem for sure. Good move. Yeah, it's a decent strategy. Oh, and also Spock and Ahura, they broke up. Oh, okay. They... I was kind of hoping for a bigger reaction on that. Eh. Oh my god, do people not care about that relationship? Not particularly, no. <laughs> I kind of wish we hadn't spent so much time building that up. Anyway, Spock is also thinking of leaving the Enterprise. Wow, well, the two Dude literally has no emotions. Huh? I wonder if they'll have a big adventure that'll change their minds. They will. Oh boy. Anyway, so then this alien lady shows up and she's like, You guys gotta help me. My ship malfunctioned on a nearby planet in uncharted space in this nebula where signals can't pass. The Federation built their giant new star base right next to uncharted space? They did, yeah. Right nearby. Seems a little dangerous. For sure. So Kirk is like, all right, lead the way, mysterious space lady. No further questions. Well, it feels like they should have some further questions. <laughs> well, they're not gonna, so the movie can happen. And they're gonna get ambushed. Sure, yeah, of course that's what happens. Yeah, this guy Crawl and his minions and a swarm of space drones, they attack the Enterprise because he wants that ancient weapon thing. How did he know they had it? Well, he's been listening to the Federation signals. I thought signals gonna get through the nebula. Yeah, no, they can't. So anyway, the Enterprise gets pretty much destroyed and a bunch of the crew gets captured and the rest of the crew gets split up on this planet. Oh, not good. And Bones ends up with Spock, who has this serious injury. I mean, he might die. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I guess Bones should give him some of that super blood, huh? What? Remember in the last movie when they discovered super blood and it literally brought Kirk back to life? They should use some of that on Spock, probably. <laughs> we don't talk about that super blood thing never happened. No, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that happened. No, it didn't. I just totally forgot about that. I have sworn it had. Well, it didn't. Okay. Hey, what's going on with Carol Marcus? I don't know who that is. Remember from the last movie she joined the Enterprise at the end? I don't know what you're talking about. So Kirk and Chekhov and Ambush Lady, they find the Enterprise, and it's next to Pride Rock from The Lion King. What? And they head into it to get that piece of weapon, because that's still in there. Did she lead them into an ambush? She did, but then she lied some more, and they trusted her again. Oh, they should definitely stop doing that. <laughs> After this time, they do. So Kirk and Chekhov, they escape just in the nick of time, like this explosion sends them flying. Oh my god, are they okay? What do you think? I think they're probably okay. And so meanwhile, Scotty is with this alien 
American lady, Jayla. And she's been living in this crashed federation ship called the USS Franklin. Oh, interesting. What's that doing there? Well, we're going to find out towards the end of the movie that this was actually Crawl's ship. His name was Edison. He was human. Oh, he made it sound like he was an alien. Well, he looks like an alien, but that's because we're going to do this thing where he's draining the life force out of people in order to stay alive a long time. Oh, he's a vampire. He's kind of a space vampire. That's he pretty cool. a fun new name. Yeah. And he gets that's pretty cool. a fun alien language, too. Huh. Anyway, he's mad at the federation because they never came to rescue him. That's his motivation. Also, he really likes war. He would like some more war. Pretty generically evil. Yeah. This is the <laughs> third movie in a row where we have a bad guy from a different time period who's specifically mad at the Federation about something. Three for three. Wow, 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 wow. Jill has been hiding this ship with this kind of reflector camouflage technology. Wouldn't crawl know where it is. It was his ship. Yeah. So then most of the main characters show up because somehow they all crashed within walking distance of each other on this planet. Oh, that worked out nicely. <laughs> it did. So then they go save the crew while Kirk rides a motorcycle that's been lying around for more than a century but still works perfectly. Why does he ride a motorcycle? Because we're going to have to make a trailer for this That's movie. hilarious. Because <laughs> during these corona driving, times, my, my car doesn't even work if I don't drive it for like a week or two. <laughs> Well, yo, honestly, I feel the same, bro. I gotta, I gotta turn on my car every other day just to make sure it's, bro, like, it's good. It's you know? every freaking three, four days. It's dying I know, <laughs> for me. I know, I know. Crew were never oh, able man. to get it operational. It's gonna be tough for them to do that. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely uh, an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they're the main character, so they figure it out in a couple of minutes. Oh, uh, being a main character is so helpful. So now Crawl is headed towards the Federation <laughs> base with this swarm of B ships and this bioweapon he wants to detonate. Wow, well, well, the Federation should beam some bombs onto his ship. No, you can't beam bombs onto ship. That'd be chaos. But that's, we did that with torpedoes in the last movie. No, we didn't. We didn't do that. Oh, well, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure we established they could beam bombs onto other ships. Okay, sir, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about things we established in the last movie, okay? Okay, let's get off of that freaking <laughs> backity back you got there. <laughs> right. So anyway, the good guys managed to destroy all the bees by playing the Beastie Boys very loud. What? But Crawl manages to get onto the star base and he's gonna use his bioweapon in this thing that controls all the air supply for the whole base. They don't have any security or safety protocols around that thing? They don't, no. So does the Federation just beam them out of there? No, they don't. Instead, Kirk goes and has a fist fight with them. That's oh a good strategy. God. Too. So then Kirk manages to save the day and Crawl gets shot up into space and dies. Very cool. And now that Kirk and Spock almost died, they're like, hey, this job is pretty fun. Maybe we should stick around. Oh, seems like they have an unhealthy relationship with this job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they get Jayla to join the crew, too. Is she going to disappear like Harold Marcus? I don't know who that is. So what do you think? Well, I mean, I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if we don't do that marketing thing where we show every single plot point in the trailers, I think people are going to want to go see this. For sure. For sure. We might do that, though. What? <laughs> Hello, it's Ryan here. Thank you. Oh man, that's funny. I think that that's why people should know it a lot. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You know, yeah. man. Honestly, the Star Trek storyline, from what I remember from the first two movies, it's actually intriguing. It's a, it's an appealing storyline. Mm -hmm. They have really really good characters. Unfortunate that like the third one didn't work out so well. But man, mm -hmm. what a cast, eh? What a cast. Like one of them is now the butcher from from the, uh, what's it called? Oh my god, the boys. Zoe Saldana herself, Chris Pine. Obviously, we talked about Wonder Woman. Idris Elba. Idris Elba was also in it. That's a that's a really really stellar cast for it to be not so good of a movie. So they probably paid a good amount of money to that cast. Yeah, and the effects and everything of that movie were right? insane. Like yeah. that movie was the best one I think in effects. Probably, probably, which is just kind of. It's kind of sad because it didn't work out the way it would. Maybe I'll watch the movie, yeah. though. I'm kind of intrigued to watch the movie now, to be honest with you. Trust me, it's, it's not bad. Okay, okay, all right. Yo, what's up? Thanks for watching our video, and if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe, and watch our other videos. Pick them, pick them right there.